A little while ago, I was given a Japanese periodic table. It's really quite fun with lots of pictures on it. But I was always a bit mystified why on element 75, rhenium, there was a picture of a Japanese scientist. And if you look carefully, it says 1908. And then last week, I was sent a scientific paper by our YouTube fan, Nageyasu Nawa, who lives in Japan, the one who gave me this terrific coat, this happy, which explained the whole thing. So now I'm going to tell you, if you look at my sleeve here, element 43, that's now called technetium, and element 75, rhenium. One of the triumphs of periodic table, as produced by Mendeleev, is that it predicted where elements should be found. In the beginning of the 20th century, the periodic table looked much like the one that's here. This one is slightly later, it's from about 1920. And the important thing is that there is a hole here where element 43 should be, and there is another hole here where element 75 should be. Our story involves a Japanese chemist called Agawa, who was born a few years before Mendeleev even proposed the periodic table. And in 1906, he got a scholarship to work at University College London with the famous chemist Sir William Ramsey, who was one of the first winners of the Nobel Prize in chemistry, who discovered the element argon. William Ramsey was very keen to get a supply of helium gas. And at the beginning of the 20th century, you couldn't just buy helium in a cylinder. So instead, he bought a quarter of a ton of a rather strange mineral called thorionite from Sri Lanka. Thorionite contains the element thorium. You may have seen my sample of thorium already. Thorium decays to make alpha particles which generates helium that is trapped in this mineral. So if you grind it up carefully in the right way, you can trap the helium gas. When Agawa arrived at University College London, there was a lot of this mineral, and he was given, I think, about one and a half kilos of this mineral and asked to analyze it to see if he could find anything interesting. He did lots of chemical separations. You can see in the paper I was given, there's this huge diagram of how he separated different fractions. And he ended up with a small amount of material, which could be a salt of a new element. In those days, the only way you could identify an element was by measuring its atomic weight, which involved knowing the formula of the salt that you had got, and then calculating what the weight of the metal was. Agawa got the formula of the salt wrong, so he thought he had made element 43. He called it Nipponium in honor of Japan. Sir William Ramsey encouraged him to call it Nipponium with the symbol NP, which is now used for Neptunium. But it turned out he had prepared element 75, but he never realized this. After three years, he went back to Japan and bought some of his own thorionite to continue his studies and spent a lot of time analyzing this and trying to produce more samples. What he didn't know was that element 43 is radioactive. You can see our video about technetium and its radioactivity. In 1925, rhenium was isolated by a husband and wife team called Nodak in Germany, and they also thought they'd made element 43, but they were wrong about that. So in most periodic tables, it has been assigned that the Nodaks were the discoverers of rhenium, and they were in the sense that it is their work that led to the study of rhenium, but People have gone on studying Agawa's results, and particularly the X-ray spectrum of the element, which can be interpreted as being the X-ray spectrum of rhenium. 
when they were recording the spectrum, they didn't know what the spectrum of rhenium should look like. So it wasn't that they were trying to fiddle their results to fit the expected pattern. But very surprisingly, there have been huge arguments. Did Agawa discover rhenium or not? And reading this article, to me at least, it looks quite convincing. But I think there's quite an important message. First of all, there is the message that chemists who were working 120 years ago really had to do very difficult experiments under conditions which modern chemists would not be able to do now. We're not probably skilled enough to get a few milligrams out of a kilogram and a half of rock. But also, if you're going to try and discover an element, even if you actually isolate it, if you identify it wrongly, you may not get the credit that's due to you. That brings us back to my Japanese periodic table. I think it is really good that with this periodic table, Agawa got his proper recognition, at least in one periodic table. Here, I've got a modern Japanese periodic table without the pictures, and of course, you can see down here element 113, Nihonium, which was synthesized in Japan. It was named in 2017. Nihonium has its name derived from Japan just in the same way that Nipponium had its name derived from Japan. So it is possible that if Agawa had been recognized in time that he discovered rhenium, we could have two elements named after Japan on the periodic table.